This is Yaro Kubrin, Thursday, May, May 30th, High at 9 News. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in. My article today is about California police and law enforcement, and it is from SF Gate. Lester Black, who's done a fantastically consistent job of covering this industry. Thank you. The ship has sailed. California cops just reversed their opinion on legal weed. Earlier this month, the Peace Officers Research Association of California, an association of over 950 police unions representing over 80,000 officers, announced that it now supports marijuana legalization and legal pot businesses. This ship has sailed, they wrote, in a policy position released earlier this month announcing its call for federal cannabis legalization. And the vast majority of Americans, cannabis is legal and accessible. So the group coincided with its support of the state's 2.0 Act, a congressional bill that would force the federal government to recognize state legal cannabis programs as valid under federal law. The bill would also provide a massive financial boost to legal pot companies. Act President Brian Marble told SFGate the bill would allow federal authorities to coordinate directly with local law enforcement to fight illicit co cannabis companies and support legal pot farms. We're not making moral judgments as to whether you should smoke it or don't smoke it, but we want to make sure legal cannabis companies aren't being drowned out by the illicit market, Marvel said to SFGate. If approved, the bill would create massive cash windfall for the legal industry by reducing its federal tax rate, creating a pathway for California pot businesses to legally export their products across state lines, a long-held dream within the legal industry. PORAC, which is the largest law enforcement group in California and the largest statewide police group in the country, opposed Proposition 64, the 2016 voter initiative that legalized marijuana in California. But the group's opinion has shifted as cannabis became more normalized in police officers amongst police officers in the state, according to Marvel. A fair amount of officers patrolling the streets nowadays know nothing other than legalized marijuana in the state of California. They are much more receptive to conversations on marijuana. Marvel said the federal pot prohibition requires local law enforcement to do the majority of the work fighting illegal cannabis operations. If federal prohibition ended, however, federal officers could help fight the illicit market, thereby freeing up more local police to fight other types of crime. The state's 2.0 Act also calls for a new federal tax on cannabis that would help fund cannabis regulation and enforcement. Marble said funds for law enforcement was one reason the group supported the bill. Of course you did! Korak was, a, was joined by Oregon Statewide Law Enforcement Officer Group in announcing that it supports the state's 2.0 Act. Porak said the statement in, to SF Gate that it was at first time a statewide law enforcement group had supported a pathway to federal legalization. Marvel said shutting down illegal pot farms in the environment damaged the cause. Marvel said shutting down illegal pot farms and the environmental damage they caused was another reason the group wanted to support legal farms. We really need to do everything in our power to eradicate the illegal grows in California, he said. So this is Yarrow Kubrin, Hyatt 9 News. I'd like to know what the rest of you think. This is a big shift. This is a big shift. What do you guys oh, think? The bead cops are the ones that, that uh, ultimately... Uh, tell the policymakers in PORAC what to do. And I was involved in PORAC back in the 90s. And the average beat cop knew that, you know, marijuana legalization um, it didn't matter because they didn't care anyway. Uh, they was an easy way to grab people. But now we're down the road and it's a misdemeanor soaking wet. Um, when you're a police officer and you get into your car and head out, you're looking for people who are violent, people who are hurting other people, that are stealing. And when you got to deal with weed and you can't get a conviction anymore, the B cop doesn't want to deal with it. Okay, so they're telling their policy maker, hey, this is, this is more than what we want to do. We have real crime out there. Leave us alone. But I also see that, hey, if we give you a little bit here and you give us some money, then we're for you. No, no, no. Nonsense. Nonsense. Well, you know, they recognize that the local cops are the ones that are doing all the work. So it's a reality on the ground that they don't have the forces out there to deal with weed. And let's see, we can just boost the legalization and green light that. And then let the feds go after these illegal growers. Well, Dale, don't you think too that that part of, of this also is is due to the fact that um, they don't really get a lot of brownie points. You know, the bigger the bust, the bigger the boost kind of thing, um, as far as towards their promotions or, or whatnot by actually busting uh, cannabis 
individuals it's like it's like it's not sexy anymore they're not getting enough points and it's wasting too much time and the ju- and the prosecutors aren't prosecuting so it's like why 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 enforce that well but that that's the long term ramifications of 64 where they made weed a misdemeanor soaking wet mm-hmm. i mean you really got to work hard to get anything more than a misdemeanor out of weed and, and cops have discretion. If it's a felony, you have a lot less discretion with a misdemeanor. They don't want to. They don't want to fuck with marijuana unless they have to. And you're right. If they may go to all the trouble, to all the paperwork, to put a case in front of a prosecutor, yep. and they roll their eyes and walk away, why are you doing this? Yep. Yep. I just wasted all those. I think there's uh, some man hours. There's some good and some bad in this. Uh, the bad is. <laughs> They're definitely aligning their position with their financial interests. So that's not a moral North Star. They're not like, oops, prohibition didn't work, my bad. Mm-hmm. They're saying, oh, there's some there's some economic opportunity in this. I think the good, though, is that this definitely is a symptom of the normalization of cannabis. And, and when this gentleman was talking about a lot of the cops don't know anything but legal weed, what he's saying is that his beat staff are younger people who've grown up in a paradigm that was different than the old guard. I, I think at the end of the day, <laughs> I like most of this, but for the call for a federal tax on cannabis. And so that's the one part where there's no room for any more taxes. We need well, tax reform more than we need another layer of people taking their piece out of this industry. Well, Yaro, just, right. just just on that, you have to be have to be a realist is that you're not going to get rid of 280E without some type of federal excise tax because there has to be something that fills that gap from all the money that the government's currently getting. Oh, but an excise tax is easier for an industry to pay than the penalty from 280E. This industry is getting killed by 280E right now. I go, I go around my elbow to get to my thumb to set up corporations and businesses to get around 280E, and there's just extra layers of cost. Besides, it costs you money and the bottom line. So I think my, I'd recommend my businesses that I represent. You, you know, you give up a lot of things. That um, to get an excise tax because it's going to be a lot lower than what you're paying in reality for 280e. But that's just part of it. The banking issues go away. So I think at some point, even the federal policymakers with these these state like poor act, these state law enforcement groups barking at them are going to realize that we are just chasing our tail here. No one wants to admit the war on drugs didn't work, but maybe they'll admit they were kind of short on being right about it. Mm-hmm. And let's see if we can correct some of this stupid shit we continue to do. Mm-hmm. Drugs won. Drugs won. Oh, all day long. All day long. Drugs won. <laughs> well, yeah. human, human, human behavior won. If you outlaw human behavior, you're on the wrong side, right? For the most part. So... Yeah. People have been using cannabis for a long, long time, and so you outlaw that human behavior. That law is probably not going to work out in the long run. I mean, that's pretty much every law in America outlaws human behavior, <laughs> does it not? 